Welcome back, Philadelphia Phillies fans. We are at August 1st, 2023. Today's episode, we're going to go over how the team's done, review the individual players, uh, look at the trade deadline and what we did do and didn't do, look at the draft, and a quick overview of some prospects as well. So things are going pretty well here. 67 and 34, second best team in baseball, a game and a half behind the Dodgers, who have won nine in a row, and we've gone five and five in our last 10, in order for them now be a game and a half up on us. But top four make the postseason, so pretty big gap here after the top four. Not a very exciting race. The AL is much more exciting over here. You can see, you know, over half the uh, over half the league still has a shot at the playoffs at the postseason. So here, I mean, it's going to take some some rallies here by some of these teams in this cluster to make this interesting. So we're sixty seven and thirty four. Uh, Pythagorean, we are. Uh, 65 and 36 for plus two, but the plus 140 run differential is tops in the league. Uh, we're 18 and 16 in one run games, eight and two in extra innings, 24 and 10 against lefties, 43 and 24 against righties. So the way that we got here is pretty interesting. Um, some some unexpected bad performances, some good performances. Let's go to the info first. Runs scored, we're fourth in the AL, fifth in OPS, fifth in home runs. Pitching, we're, I mean, we're just first in everything. We're just dominating pitching-wise. Some of that's due, of course, to the excellent defense, second in efficiency, second in zone rating, first in BABIP, uh, 17 and 5, 18 and 10, 17 and 10, and then 15 and 9 in July. July, with the 625 winning percentage being our worst on the season for a month so far. So let's meet the team. Let's see how everybody's doing. Uh, what split do I have on here that war is not... Uh... It says no split. Okay, there we go. So Manny Machado is leading the way. And if you notice some guys are missing, some new names are here. I will get into all who everybody is and where, like, you know, Alec Bohm is, for example. So Manny with a 116 WRC plus 3.6 war leading the team uh, in war. Reese Hoskins with a 137 WRC plus and 2.1 war. He's not, uh, it, you know, he has 100 fewer bats and about 20 fewer games than Manny. So he, he sits out every so often. Cornelius Randolph, again, the first base hitting prospect who came out of nowhere to be a top 100 prospect. I called him up, uh, I don't know, a couple months ago. In about half the plate appearances he ha of everybody else, he has two war. A 147 WRC plus paces the team right now. I mean, he's on pace to play in 85 games and put up 3.2 war. So like an MVP caliber first 50 games to his career. And, I mean, he's just been awesome. He's just been awesome. He did lose his prospect status, but where was he? He was number 27 the last time. or he's st Yeah, he was number 27 in July. So he's been awesome. He's playing a lot of first base for us. Bryce Harper, 102 WRC plus 1.5 war. Pretty disappointing season from Bryce. I don't know, man. Uh, his BABIP is way down, 258. He's normally a low to mid threes guys guy. Uh, so... You know, we're one of the best teams in the league, and Bryce Harper is uh, a slightly above average player for us. Uh, Kiermaier having a great season at the plate when he's healthy. Adames, not a great season at the plate, but just a stud with the glove. Bryson Stott has uh, played in 49 games for us, and he's exactly league average at the bat, 1.1 war. But he's a lefty, and you can see against lefties, He's had 48 plate appearances and he got a 63 WRC plus against righties in 163, a 111 WRC plus. So we now has, have him on the bench against lefties. So he's a platoon bat. We have a few of those situations going on. Very good against righties. Hedges, surprisingly good with the bat. Nick Solak was brought in at the de trade deadline. He's only played three games for us and he's putting up a 364 WRC plus so far. Um, so that's because he can he can play second base and masters lefties. He has got a career 124 WRC plus against lefties. Against righties, he's a career 83. So he is our second base platoon with stop. Logan Davidson, another top 100 prospect who I finally gave the call to a couple weeks ago. He's played in 12 games and he's lighting the world on fire. 228 WRC plus. He's basically playing five days a week at different positions. He's playing some second, some third, some short, some left and some DH. So he's kind of playing all over in a super utility type role of a guy who doesn't, super utility player who isn't that great in the field. Um, but he's absolutely murdering the ball so far. Uh, Brian Reynolds, league average, average with the bat. Cespedes is another 
platoon type situation. You can see against lefties, he's got a 178 WRC plus in 78 plate appearances, 84 plate appearances against righties, a 56 WRC plus. So he will be facing fewer and fewer righties as we um, go on in the season. JT Realmuto, a miserable season with a 67 WRC plus, but his catching skills is cer are certainly a large part of why our pitching staff is so good. So he's still bringing value to the team. So those are the hitters on the roster now. I'll go down the 40 man and show you where like Moniak, Hazley, Bohm, you know, who's there, who's not, etc. Pitching wise, uh, Aaron Nola, 3.4 war, 3.18 ERA, 3.32 FIP, excellent season. Mike Clevenger just brought him at the trade deadline, uh, has not pitched just yet for us. He was in Colorado on pace for a 5.3 war season. He's under contract next year and the Rockies will be paying 55% of that 8.5 million. We gave up... Uh, not a whole lot for him. Armentera is a minor league pitcher who is 23 and was in a ball for us that I don't see uh, as a future piece. Tyler Driver, uh, a 22 year old pitcher out with a torn labrum who uh, the Rockies really liked him for some reason. OSA higher on him a little bit, but yeah, the Rockies liked him a lot in the negotiations. And they also liked this guy a lot, Chris Burke, who to me does not, I mean, he's a leader in work ethic, but he was an A-ball, about league average hitter, and not a good catcher. So that's what we give up for Clevenger, and he'll be our fifth starter. These stats are not with us. Wheeler, another great season from him, uh, 2.97 ERA, 3.64 FIP. Barrio, solid, 2.1 WAR, 4.29 ERA, 3.84 FIP. Sonny Gray, solid. Justice Sheffield with 69 nice innings, and out of the bullpen has already put up 1.6 WAR. Zach Eflin, uh, 102 innings, 1.4 WAR, 3.88 ERA. He's now our long man. We have a lot of depth now. So Clevenger's in the rotation, Eflin's in the bullpen. Sir Anthony, a 0 0.87 ERA, 2.39 FIP. He's brought up 2.2 R war, which is third on the team in 41 innings. Outstanding. Blake Trinan's been good. Feltman's been good. Alvarado's been good. We just brought in Drew Pomerantz to fortify the um, middle relief portion of our bullpen from a lefty perspective. Uh, he's a good reliever. Scott Alexander is there too. Two relievers did get sent down to AAA, who are both, were both having very good seasons. Uh, one is Colton Eastman. Eastman had put up a two point uh, a 2.64 ERA in 47 innings for us, but uh, I like our depth with Clevenger more than Eastman on the major league team, and we've got a great, you know, a guy who's having a great season ready to come in if anything happens. And then Kolarik also was having a nice season for us. He had put up uh, 0.2 war, 0.5 R war, 3.06 ERA, 3.99 FIP. Uh, and he's now in the minors, and I, I feel like our team is really deep now with those guys as our first stand-ins. So let's look at the 40-man, and I'll show you uh, some of the things that haven't gone well for us. So Eastman we talked about. Uh, Falter has not been up. Kolarik we talked about. Malaris has not been up. Poulin has not been up. Fox has been up briefly, I think. Yeah, he's pitched two innings for us, So, but he's a future piece for us. Uh, Alec Bohm is in AAA, and he's mashing in 133 plate appearances. In Philly this year, 227 plate appearances, negative 0.3 war, 72 WRC+. plus. I don't know, man. I, I don't know. I feel like he could be a star for us, but he has not done that yet. Nick Maton, uh, also d mashing now in AAA, but in 219 plate appearances, a 73 WRC+, plus in Philly. Uh, Alfonso Rivas has not been up. Hazley uh, hitting well in AAA. 127 plate appearances in Philly with a 7 to 7, 77 WRC+. Plus. Uh, Jamai Jones has been up and down some. He had an 83 WRC plus in 150 plate appearances. Um, and who, uh, Moniak, same old story, man. Uh, 94 plate appearances, a 45 WRC+. Plus, and he's about league average in AAA now. Rojas has not been up. Swaggerty has not been up. So as you can see, a bunch of guys uh, in Bohm, Moniak, Maton, uh, Hazley, they sucked. But Randolph has come up and mashed. Stott has been good enough. Davidson's been good enough. Uh, so yeah, two big disappointments are our top pitching prospect, Edouard Segovia, is out for 10 months with a torn elbow ligament. ligament. That blows. That totally sucks. Um Reggie Lawson, another solid pitching prospect for us, out for seven more weeks of the partially torn labrum. So that's the 40 man. Let me uh, go ahead and show you some of the prospects that I've been tracking, if I can find where I wanna go here. So 
So let me just show you. Yeah, I can quickly go through these. Oh no, actually, uh, so Gaijin was my first round pick last year. He's struggling in rookie ball at the age. He just turned 20. Uh, Mick Abel is out with a elbow injury, elbow surgery. He's in high A and wasn't doing much. I don't know, man. Um, Castaneda looking like a possible top pitching prospect for us, the number 34 prospect in baseball. He has struggled ERA-wise, but not FIP-wise in high A. So hopefully he can find some better luck. Uh, let's see, Rock Riggio, that guy we paid over slot for in 2021, is about league average in his, um, it's his first full season in A-ball, because he came up the year he's drafted from rookie ball, and then last year he's out much of the year injured. Uh, so hopefully he can uh, have a strong August and then start next year in high A or double A. First round pick from 2021, 13th overall, Casey Salk, uh, having a good season in A-ball. Having a good season at the age of 20, he just turned 20, so he's still pretty young, a 110 WRC+. Plus. That's good to see. Uh, Garcia is having a nice season in double A with a 123 WRC plus. Uh, Brent, Brent Batty or Beatty is having a really good season in triple A. And let's see, Davidson we talked about. Yeah, most of these guys we talked about. So those are some of the main prospects that I keep an eye on. And then let's go ahead and take a look at the draft. I'm just going to show you my first five picks from this year. First round pick, 23rd overall, was Enrique Bradfield. And so he uh, he's a star center fielder, you know, glove-wise. Bat, you know, he's almost at his ceiling. So I really feel like, worst case scenario, he's a fourth outfielder who's really good with the glove. So I went for high floor with this pick because I didn't really like any of the high ceiling guys in this area. And I think... I think he's going to be a major league player. It's just, you know, he might only be a major league player for a few years, but he's got the high work ethic, so that's nice. Uh, Antonio Anderson, higher ceiling, uh, lower floor type of guy, an infielder, 18 years old. Uh, third round pick was Caleb Hampton, a possible power outfield bat and a leader and uh, a high schooler. And then Diaz is a college pitcher in the fourth round who just got promoted from A ball or rookie ball to A ball. And then uh, let's see, Hudson, Jacob Hudson, a high school arm who is in rookie ball in our rotation. And so those are the first five round picks. Um, that's, uh, I'll show you around the league real quick, just in terms of leaders. Let's go to statistics and let's see. Give me one second here. All right, so Jordan Alvarez is leading the league with 30 homers and 97 ribbies. Pavin Smith with the 353 uh, average. Warwise Wander is leading the league at 5.3, then followed by Alvarez, Lindor, Bellinger, Seeger, Acuna, Bogarts. And pitching wise, uh, Sixto Sanchez with a 2.545 ERA leading the way there. War, Zach Thompson leading with four, followed by Cole, Freed, Gossman, Nola, Clevenger. Uh, and Rogers from Miami. And strikeouts, we got Cole, Ray, Nola, DeGrom, Pearson, Gray, Puck. And let's see, Nola, or Gray is up there in K9 at 10.2. So, yeah, that's that's the league. That's what's going on. Uh, real quick at the standings again, you can check out where your favorite team is. Sorry, Yankees fans, you suck this year. Um, rough league, rough year for the division formerly known as the American League East with the Red Sox, Orioles, and Yankees all down here. And uh, so, yeah, I mean, it would take a major collapse to not make the postseason. I will update you guys when we get to that point, but that's all for now. And thanks as always for watching, and I will talk to you guys next time. Bye.